We're speaking this morning to Mr. Kwan Chi Heng, who is also known as Uncle Kentang. He is a philanthropist, of course. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Kwan, for being here with us on the Light Breakfast this morning. Thank you for inviting me here. And uh, hi, everyone. We are here in uh, Light yes. this morning. And you listen to Light as well, right? Uh, definitely. Yes, of course. <laughs> it's my favorite channel. <laughs> all right. Okay, perfect. Now, Mr. Kwan, you've done many great things all on your own from donating food to free ambulance service to Tencent markets. What was it that inspired you to start giving back? Uh, feeling good because uh, actually when you give to people, you feel positive and you, so you feel, you know, you just have that type of uh, uh, shock syndrome, shock syndrome uh, feeling, you know. So when you give to somebody, they will say thank you to you, they will smile at you. And, and, and uh, of course, uh, uh, this is Malaysia and, and this is our journey together. Yeah. When did it start then? Yeah. I mean, I'm like about 20 what? years ago. Wow. Was yeah. there one moment that you went like I'm like oh yo these people got not enough food I got to do this for them? Uh, because I was I was from a very poor family from Johor and uh, we are we are we are from the rubber estate uh, in, in, in Tanjung Labo and and we went through all that all that uh, condition before you know walking to school no food no money from the canteen people go to the canteen I'll run to the toilet you know what? why in the recess we run to the toilet to fill up our stomach with, with pipe water so that we we, we, can, we have no money to eat right. so we do people go people rush to the canteen but to me no I rush to the biggest pipe in the school so there I can uh, quench my yeah, my hunger like, uh, right. no hunger because when you're hungry you drink a lot of water you become full right right so that is what I was doing from 71 to 76 Oh uh, in that goodness. primary school, yeah. Mm. Of course, the teachers after that, the teachers realized that uh, then they give us the the uh, canteen uh, coupon. Uh, I thank my teachers for that and uh, get to eat a bit. But they also not full because why we are we are active, uh, so yeah, we yeah. have to drink more water to right to suppress the hunger. Now, do you remember the first time you gave back? Like, what was your earliest memory of giving back to the less fortunate? I think I think quite some time. It's about twenty years. Uh, yeah. 30 years ago <laughs> so so there nothing much because this is uh, when you meet someone who is hungry or poor I I, I I remember the first thing I did when I came to KL after my SPM I was in Chowkit and someone uh, I was selling fire extinguisher at that, that time okay. part time selling fire then a man came to my table and said that he has no money to eat, and I said, "Okay, let's let's join me." That was seven. I was seventeen then. Mm. I was seventeen after my SPM. I came to KL, so I start my KL life with selling fire extinguisher, the small one for the taxi. Right, and, right. Yeah, you've done so many things. So you've always had that sharing. Sharing is caring um, mantra in you, sort of. That's why you started all these charity initiatives. Uh yeah, it is it is uh logical for us to help someone who is uh hungry or whatever lah. It's logical. Okay, oh, but okay. Yeah, yeah, no, no. But when you think about it, though, constantly giving is it the the one way to to solve this problem? Because if not, there's always going to be someone that you need to help and everything, right? I think we cannot solve the whole problem, but we can stop the hunger at that time. Yeah. That is more important. Mm. Yeah. But tell us about your nickname, Uncle Kentang. Oh, how Uncle did Kentang. that come about? And now you wear a shirt with a potato on it as well. Like, <laughs> how did actually, that happen? Actually, uh, it's very coincident because when I was giving uh, rice, uh, I thought that oh, it's awesome because we're giving rice. You know, then we feel that oh, we're great. You know, we we feel happy that. But at one time, uh, I w but when I give uh, people food. Uh, formerly, I don't tell them my name. Mm. Uh, they thought I'm from political parties. Then uh, one day I walk around and I came back. I saw somebody was they cooked the rice, cooked the rice already. I mean, so they they was eating with ketchup. Right. So I got a shock of my life. Because why are these poor people eating with ketchup? Am I doing something wrong? So I asked my doctor's friend. They told me you better give potato because potato is kentang is more is is almost the same. Uh, nutrients as the brass and children like to do you know wheat potato mashed potato whatever lah so that is where I always go with one sack of kentang so they don't know my name because I was quite fat quite plump last time 
So they told me, hey, I'm going to go to the Mari. So they, that's a name that stick. It right. become a... Uh, Was there a point in time when you just decided, okay, this is what I'm going to do full time? What were you before you became Uncle Kentang, oh, yeah. actually? I was uh, doing business as a florist. Uh, many of the my clients knows me. I was in uh, Bukit Bintang for quite quite gung ho florist for 18 years. I think most of the forty uh, fifty people, I mean age forty fifty fifty, they will knows me because why? We, I sell most of the roses in in the town. Right. Oh. So 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 after that, uh, I decided that uh, it's time to leave that uh, business because uh, flowers are getting expensive. This and that and then. Uh, I went into uh, other business, and I left. You know, left uh, the shop. So, and then when I moved to Puchong, I see that a lot of poor people. Then you know, started to give here and there, a bit, a bit by a bit. Then, uh, yeah, and then become bigger and bigger. The crowd getting bigger and bigger. And then you have to do it. Uh, you know, to get the team done. So now you're running this uh, sort of NGO on your own, full time now. Uh, I'm I, I'm I'm running it for others because all my supporters are supporting the the thing. We have just recently acquired a, a ambulance uh, by Facebook. Three days we asked for the uh, funding, and all the supporters chip in, and we have uh, one ambulance, extra one ambulance. So now we got eight ambulance. Wow! To serve the poor, yeah. You bought one ambulance from Facebook. From Facebook, just, just, I just tell them that uh, this is uh, we, we want to buy one ambulance, and then for the Facebook, everyone chip in twenty ringgit, twenty ringgit. So we got hundred fifty thousand. But yesterday we did another, another uh, thing that we asked for Van Janaza because there is a uh, uh, in uh, uh, Shalom. Uh, there is some uh, people that will start there asking me whether they can get a, get a Van Janaza, and we put it in the Facebook. Uh, two days within two days, we get the the ninety thousand ringgit uh, done. That that is like <laughs> amazing fundraising. Right? To think about it, right? I've never seen anybody being able to I, do that. I, I, I was it's truly amazing because why I will tell all the listeners. I know the Sings, the Indian, the Chinese, everyone chip in. So I was looking yesterday only. We collected yesterday. I saw the the the, the thing sixty thousand just like that. Wow. Ah, uh, giving because the first earlier day we collect about thirty thousand, then the second day it run to nine sixty thousand, so it's ninety thousand. Now we are collecting another van jenaza for the poor people in Rao. Yeah, uh, we are going to give it to the Rao people. You know, um, big companies ah uh, always they put on Facebook they have a whole digital marketing team. People will say, oh, you cannot put this particular word inside here. If not, you cannot get en- enough people to to follow you and everything. What did you put? In your Facebook post, that suddenly you got like eight ambulance, one van jenaza, and everything. No, we days. have six van jenaza. Six van jenaza. Six van jenaza. We have buses, we have lorry, we have bikes, we have taxis. What do you say in that that post? I didn't put words in the Facebook. I put my heart in the Facebook. Wow. Wow. Okay, that's and, the difference. And they they don't they never listen to my word. They just listen to my heart, and they they put their heart too. I tell my followers. I tell my followers. They must put a lot of trust in you, Mr. Kwan, to just give whenever yeah. you ask. Because I write with heart. Wow. I do not write with my fingers. I whatever I say is for others. It's not for me. Because I think that uh, in Malaysia, uh, what we need to do is to give our heart to others, and we can we can become a very great nation. I I really think I I was very touched actually. Uh, uh, by the by the by the. Uh, people who put in the effort together, and we can see that the multiracial inside the, the the country. It's not like what we hear outside. Totally different. If you check my, I can give you my bank statement, and you can look through the bank statement. I can see that people from Sabah, Sarawak also donated. Uh, this is for Semananjo, but everyone chip in. That's why we can get. And then we are we are reaching the second second. I mean. We are getting the second van jenaza through Facebook uh, for the Rao people because Rao is quite a big place, and um, there are people who are quite poor there, so they want to do their. Even this morning, now, now, now we are doing one, one case. Twenty-four years old passed away in. Uh, now at at we I'm in the studio now. My team is doing a, the the funeral for the twenty-four years old right. Malay boy in Ampang. Now, 
So all these services are provided for free. Yeah, we try to get the money from the uh, followers mm. and uh, we support the family. Because the mother is a single mother and uh, the son passed away suddenly. So they cannot afford to do anything. Mm. Now, uh, Mr. Kwan, do you put up your own money for, for these projects? Yeah, we do business. Of course, we do some business, uh, small, little business. And uh, we get the whatever we so, we sell in the uh, through the uh, social media, whatever, we chip in whatever part. Um, of course, uh, sometimes I also want to take some pahala from there. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Yeah. You know, uh-huh. so people, everyone is donating. I must also donate, ma. Yeah, yeah. Some, some of them, this, but not, not big amount, small yeah, amount. Yeah. But uh, most of the time, I put, put my heart and my, I put my heart there, lah. And because yeah, you're but, already putting your time and yeah. energy into it. So, but in the beginning stages, like when you first bought like beras, like rice and potatoes Kentang. and all that for for these people who are less fortunate, do you, did you use your own money to buy these things? Uh, yeah, we, we, of course, we have to use our own money to buy. Then, uh, started, then friends also getting excited. Hey, well, every time you go and give food, so they also want to give. Mm. So everyone chip in, chip in, chip in. Then we have uh, a lot of uh, resources, actually. And it's nationwide now? Uh, it's nationwide now. How many people in your team now? Or are you still a one-man show? No, we have uh, uh, 23 uh uh, permanent staff. Uh, we have uh, volunteers. We have part timers. It's quite a big team. Wow. Uh, yeah, yeah. So where where are the mainly? It's in Klang Valley. Yeah, Klang Valley. And then everywhere else, uh, you said uh, Raup also had. Uh, you were trying to source something for. Uh, of course, they are also our because I was I have another NGO which is uh, Community Policy Malaysia. So we have members all throughout all Malaysia. So they also our. Our what our pointers to look out for this. Mm. So NGO is in your blood, charity is in your blood. <laughs> it's so coincident, <laughs> right? Yeah. Now you s- tell us about one of the most memorable cases that you've handled, that you cannot forget. It's saddening. Yeah. Mother cannot, cannot, uh, cannot bury the child. No child. We 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 was in Sedan Hostel uh as a baby uh, for for four months old. Then father mother no money. Bring back to Kedah. They wanna take a bus back to Kedah. Because they don't have money. Uh. So there are a lot of incidents that we should not I think we should not talk about that. Because it's quite saddening. Because Many people, when, when someone passed away, they don't have money. I, I, I've been through that because when my dad passed away, I was only 17. So we don't even have money to buy coffin. I do not mind telling you, I, I, I'm telling the public, yes. And we, we must rely on the public. To, so I don't want that to happen to others. That's why I always tell people, you, you, anybody pass away, no money, you just tell me. We will try to raise the money. How I go and borrow or back, I will borrow for you. Because I don't want that type of feeling, you know, inside. Because we... When I look at my father's body, it's on the long chair. You know, last, last time there's a wooden chair. I think it was old time, uh, 1980. Long chair, you know. Body lying there without coffin. Then if we wait for the morning for people to donate coffee, you know. So it's it's quite uh, heartbreaking. Uh. So I always tell people, you don't have money, tell it, tell it, do it. You jangan bimbang, you kita datang. Because because that is what we can do for the for the for the people. Because people that have been there, they don't know. I've been there, I've been to the, all the mortuaries. I put my numbers in the mortuaries. I go to all the hostel, I put my numbers. I give my numbers to the mortuaries. You have you are the head of the mortuary. You tell me where there's no people, there's no money to do this funeral, you just tell us. I don't care whether it's or Asli, you are you are uh, Indonesian or you are not our not it's a dead body. You have to you have to you have to take care of that. That's all. I put my number there. I, I precise. I mean, I, I, I go and tell people. I don't wait for people to call me. I just give my number in the mortuary. Bilat mm. mayat. So during the MCO, really, we cannot move. We cannot. We are tight. You know, we are. So we just give lah. Right. Don't worry lah. The money will not end. Will not uh, depleted. One, it will be there always. Mm. 
<laughs> right. Yeah, uh, I know you have this Kentang Fund that you've set up, right? Uh, yeah. Tell us about the different initiatives that you've worked on with the Kentang Fund. I know you have ambulance, you have van janaza, you give people food. What else have you worked, off wi- worked on with the Dapo Kentang Umum. Fund? Dapo Umum is, uh, we work with the restaurant or the stalls that people can go and eat there for free. I don't have a makan store, so to start a makan store, I need a lot of capital. I asked the makan store to collaborate with me, so we pay them. So from the Kentang Fund there, we collect, we pass to the... We have halal halal food and non-halal food. Uh, because uh, we have multiracial in Malaysia. Mm. So the Kentang Fund actually is set up like this. Uh, my purpose of setting Kentang Fund is to let the youngster, like the uh, youth or the youth, that they want to do some project. about Let's say cost about 5000 to 10000 but if they're going to go and ask from the people, do you think you can get it easily? No way. So when we build the uh, reputation, so they can just come in and tell me, okay, what project they're going to do. Then I will post up for them. Then they, will, they can they can post up themselves. Then I can approve. I, as the administrator, I will approve their project. And I will monitor their project to make sure there's no, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, salaguna, uh, misuse of fund. So if they get the project, they, they because from my place, uh, we can give them uh, easily. We can raise the fund for them. So this one is to encourage youth to empower them to to become you know NGO and to help more people. If you have more NGO to help people, Malaysia will be a very great country. If you don't encourage the youth to come in and do crowdfunding and and this, they will they are feeling uh, you know. I can turn this up We are who are you? How can we raise the fund? They go and wash car, go and sell durian. How much money they can make? Yeah, fair enough. Because that one time consuming and also a lot of effort needed. So let them go in a, a platform. Any any product, I think there's a kita kita fund or this fund. Uh, there's a lot of fun uh, platform. So these are good platform for them to for the youth to be involved in social work in Malaysia. Tell us about your family. I don't remember reading anything about your family. What do they think about what you're doing right now? My family gave me a uh, very strong support because I was a crime fighter. I am still a crime fighter, so I don't talk much about my family for security reason. Okay. Uh, for security reason, because this is not. Uh, uh, I don't even post their faces in the Facebook because uh, we also do crime crime fighting works, and this will image jeopardize. Their safety. But so, people who need help from you, they go directly to you to your house, or yeah, that is why I want I want everyone to have some food because I I I've grown. You see, I myself personally, I was very poor last time, and mm. I fought with the chicken to get the chicken feed. You know, the chicken makan punya tu jagung, I take and eat because when you come to school, we are hungry. They go yeah. to the the chicken coop there. Uh, then found you know last time I don't know where you know now because this one I don't think they have now. There is a sagu you know sagu and they make in a hard one. Then they get the chicken to eat. They pour water and then they so the sagu is very uh, smell very nice one. <laughs> right. So when you're hungry, you just wallop anything and take the chicken and uh, sagu also. You you try to eat lah. Try to mm. you, you, but it's not it's not proper. But that is how we fought hung, hunger last time. Mm. And I don't want that to happen to anybody in Malaysia because. You have been there, you know, you have been there. Mm. I tell you, I wait at the Chafan store uh, until when they want to end when I was in C Park PJ. If you want to do it, you just do it. If you if you start small, I said. Start small. We, we started from a rickety, very old ambulance, which we get from the Ganu Wall, Bucho here, Bucho <laughs> there. We repair the ambulance and then we started with one. Actually, someone promised me really about three more ambulances. And hopefully, we are starting in Johor also. Uh, we're going to the rural area. We try to put the ambulance in the rural area because they need the ambulance. Because most of the people really need the ambulance. That is one of the things. And the van janaza, we try to, you know, I I, I, I collect the fund and I push out to all the uh, uh, places where they need. Mm. Uh, I don't keep it in Puchong. Really. So we have actually one in uh, Shah Alam, one in Ampang. So we place, we base it there. So they can have more people. Where else do you plan to have? So the main one is in Puchong, then Johor. Are you planning to expand this operation? Definitely. I, I hope that I wish. Uh, I I have a plan to increase it to Sumananjung first. 
Mm. Uh, because I don't know, I do not want. Because my father cannot afford to take ambulance, and he passed away yeah. pitifully. My father, my own father, having cancer, have no money to ask for ambulance. So I do not want to let that to happen anybody. That's why I, I open my doors to all cancer patients. They don't have money. They bedridden. Call us. We are settled for them. Don't ask me what, how I do, how I do it. Don't ask me because we are lucky. We we do not have cancer. Mm. We are we are we are the lucky one, fortunate one. So we help those who are sick. That is the way of life. I believe that uh, many people need the stroke patients. You know. Uh, when they don't go back for the last ride, we provide last ride. So because when they come to KRGH, they uh, they have their uh, treatment there, and the treatment fails. Mm. So they want to go back to their last house, last kampong to have a to have their last look. But the children have no money after spending two, two three months in the hostel, no money. So we provide that last ride. I have one request from one man uh, last week to look at the sea before he passed away. He is a cancer patient, so he want me to bring him to the seaside. To look at the sea, and then uh, he he will be, you know, uh, that that kind of go happily, happy. Uh, go happily, yeah. Yeah. Have you ever got in trouble for doing what you're doing? Ah uh, no. Never. Never. Uh, not never. There's no trouble <laughs> la. If you want, if you do it for hard, if the fellows call you, ah yeah okay la. You see, sick people they have short temper. First they are sick ma. And then if they walk slowly, you have to walk slowly. Then you cannot lah. Like, hey, auntie, jalan cepat cepat lah. You cannot lah. Like. This is then you they, when they are sick, they they have priority. They have VIP treatment. Right. You cannot you cannot go there because they are sick. So if they scold you, you smile lah. Like. You have to smile. You see, in the ambulance, if they if they if they uh, if they vomit, they whatever, you cannot ask them to stop vomiting lah. Like. You cannot ask them ah uh, purging or this. You cannot ask them to stop purging. So you have to wash and clean and then you can wipe. That is your you your 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 satisfaction of life, you give them when when you are not sick. You you look at the sick people. You 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 pity them. You you know you. You just help them lah. Of yeah. course, people scold me lah. <laughs> Every time some people scold me, but they scold us. We happy lah because we help them and then let them <laughs> let them at least we at least they can scold us. Yeah. If they scold their family family members ah, then the family member will get angry with them. So then they will, you know, they will they will fight in the house. Mm. So let them score the ambulance driver, the the people worker. Let them have a opportunity to score us. Don't worry, because you enjoy. Actually, I tell you the truth. Both of you must come to work for one week. Ah, uh, then you see the enjoyment of life. Actually, okay. It's so I I encourage people to come and join us, uh, for part time. You know, just Our to volunteer, serve. Is it? Uh, volunteers come, yeah. and then you see the real life, real part of life. I think what I mean more is like, have you ever got into trouble with the authorities when you're doing your things? You don't disturb their work, lah. Like, don't go up across their border, lah. Like. Mm. Your job is to do this. You do this. So you help people, and and I think uh, wonderful. Uh, we have a uh, uh, spot giving us uh, permits that you know we can we have bus that can travel anywhere in Esmeranjong to bring the kids to go jalan jalan. Right. You know, somebody donated a bus to us, a, a super coach to us. Wow! Big bus, thirty one seater. <laughs> VIP seat, so we bring the kids go around, go to Tatar Mereka, Jalan Jalan. Now, now MCO lah. So I, I mean, I mean, so COVID lah. So we less. But last time we used to bring the poor kids to move around, go berkela, you know, go for picnic. So let them enjoy the quality of life. Mm. Because these PPR children, they are quite poor. They don't, they don't have a chance. Their mother, father is working. Both of them are working. How to bring the children out? Mm. And they have no money. So we bring them, give them makan. That is the value. Value of Malaysian real life. We must spur the children to uh, sit together, play together, eat together, enjoy together, and build the nation together. Now, Mr. Kwan, when when life is over, right? What would you like to be remembered as? I I orang gila lah. <laughs> because why this is? But you see, the gila part is. Because everyone else is crazy. I, only how you go in the switch, do you need to go crazy mode only? Everyone is crazy, you know. Everyone has a very kind heart. In our life, everyone is is kind. So how are you going to switch that mode into kindness only? Uh, just you just do people like people like to see what you are doing. You know, people see you rescuing people on the roadside, you know, this and that. You know, bringing the cancer patient. 
People like to see that and then people come and spoil. People, I tell you, Malaysians are wonderful. You know, how come my house got, was like seven eleven? Because people donate. People buy uh, Milo, la, Maggi, la, Beras. La. They give to my, bring to my house. And that's where I can give to the poor. It can be less, la, you know, anything. La. Mm. You know, really, I tell you, a Malaysian, I, I really salute them. They are they are really crazy people. The, you no, know, if you say people say Malaysian Muran I say no. I can say hundred percent no. Because to me, uh, they are just how you're going to switch that mode only from A to B. Uh from uh, passive mode to active mode. So we switch it uh, and you see the uh, we have about five hundred thousand followers. Imagine we can collect ambulance hundred and fifty thousand in just three days. Just by twenty ringgit. It's one page twenty ringgit. We got hundred and fifty thousand plus within three days. We got the van Janaza two days. People never believe you can collect that amount in Facebook, but that is Malaysian kindness. You can see I can bring you the statement. I let's say I print the statement and bring to you. You see it's a aseng la, akau la, mutu la, halim la, ali la, and then this uh, Rajinder Singh la, Havinder Singh la, all jumping in to donate. You know, you don't let them donate, they will, they will get angry with you. Why you let, don't let me donate? I, you think my money cannot donate? Uh? Uh, they will ask you to start a question. They send you a private messenger. Why you don't allow me? I said, no, the donation is closed already. So you have to wait because you have to wait for another donation uh, to, to move. You know. But Malaysians are really awesome. Do you like it when people call you hero? I no hero. La. You see, uh, I'm not a hero. A hero is someone really go and fight, you know. I, I only capo only. Busy body only. So people are poor. We help them. We get this. Shock sendiri lah. SS lah, we say. SS shock sendiri go. Help me. Oh, shock. Oh, balik. Oh, I help the guy already. That's all it lah. Why, why you say hero? Malaysia, all are heroes. They are the heroes. The, the, the contributors are the heroes. I am just a facilitator. Facilitator. I facilitate these poor people to just get the thing. So this is between me and these poor people. I, the real heroes is behind the scene. Those who come and donate, you know, 1,000. Uh, so, like bus lah. Talk, 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 give, give bus. Talk, 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 give you ambulance. Just over, over one cup of tea, uh, they, uh, I want to give you one ambulance. So you're just surprised. Uh, the three siblings, they take one bus. They pay one bus to go to school before the MCO. And they take turns to go to school. Today you go, tomorrow I go. Tomorrow I go, the other one go. Because why? They have only enough money to pay for one passenger. So the bus driver don't want to take the, the other two. So they skip class here and there. I'm going to see them later. I'm tell them that you all put yourself inside the bus. I will pay the money. So I I, I know because I walk to school. I walk into my kasut bocho, you know. You ask my, my, my family, we, we all, all my sisters and my brothers, we go to the school, Kasat Bocho one. Until the teacher asks us, uh, why you, your ma father money, the mother don't money to buy, Yala don't money to buy. Sometimes we kaki ayam, sometimes we wear slipper. So slipper also the one, not the real one, the house one. So that, that I want to tell all of listeners, when you are poor, don't worry. That is God's best lesson to you. When you grow out from the poor, you feel so enjoyable because you was poor before and you know the value of life. If you are rich, you won't know what is poor. We are we are the poor, really poor, miskin one. When they makan muntara, we pakai makan nasi sama garam. Uh, it, that is how poor we are. But I really enjoy that phase of life. It make me a better person, definitely. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Kwan Chi Heng or Uncle Kentang for speaking to us. You're truly an inspiration, I think. And hopefully, uh, after hearing this interview, more people will be inspired to just do whatever they can, right? To help the less fortunate. His phone just doesn't stop. He's just <laughs> non-stop business, not, not business, non-stop uh, requests. Non-stop, right? Does it even ring at night? Yeah. Uh, don't worry. If you, if, you, if you think of the phone ringing, you, you think about the death. Mm. If the deaf, if the God says, "Hello, Mister Deaf," if I uh, restore your hearing, I give you ten phones. Do you want it? Mm. I just ask you the question. If you said, if you said, or you complain about the jam, the traffic jam, so if the God says to the blind, if I give you 
I restore your eyesight. I give you the grandfather of gem. The fellow still take it. Is it? Yeah. We we and we sometimes we forget to bersuko. We forget to to be contented with what we have. This is the problem with people. We 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 look for more and more. Mm. We do not know how to stop. This is where we need to realize that everything is a blessing. Even in adversity, it's all a blessing. Don't give up. To all Malaysians, don't give up. That is the best word to go through.